So I'm Paul DeGarabedian, Senior Media Analyst for Comscore, and I'm here at the beautiful Sinopolis, Westlake Village. I'm here with Joe Garrell, the VP of Film for Sinopolis, here in Theater 5. It's absolutely beautiful here. I'm so excited to have you on the many screens, big picture, inaugural video interview. Welcome, Joe Garrell. How are you? Thank you, man. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. It's great to see you. I want to, you know, I have a bunch of questions for you, but I want to talk about the family, your family in specific. Yeah. You told me before we started shooting that you are fourth generation in the business. Let's talk about that a little bit. I love this. Yeah, yeah. So um, my great grandfather started Nickelodeons in Deadwood, South Dakota. Really? Yep. Back in the uh, in the Western days, and uh, he grew a little circuit throughout the uh, the Northwest there, and then my grandfather, uh, learning from him, but not going with his business, started his own circuit. Oh, okay. And um, came down to Colorado, and that's where I was born in in Colorado, and and we had. I believe he had six theaters, and then uh, my dad ended up working for him. And your dad is? is? My dad is, is David Garrell, who uh, was general sales manager of Sony through the 90s. I worked with and David. And 2000s. What a great guy. He is really a great cool. guy. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and now I'm in the business. I you know, worked as a theater manager all the way up to uh, VP of film, and uh, done are. distribution, and, and now exhibition. That's so cool, and yeah. so I assume you're a movie fan, you obviously, it's in your blood. Oh yeah. But you could have gone any direction you wanted in your career, but you chose this. Yeah. Why Why do you feel that, that you had to go this route? It was built in or? It, it was, it was you know, as, as, a, as a very young child, I knew I wanted to be in this business. And whether it was exhibition, distribution, or, or production, right? I wanted to be a part of it. Yeah. And I'm happy where I'm at, and I know that there's a future still here, so I'm you know, still going with it. Well, we're gonna talk about that future quite a bit. I, I wanna set the table of how we got to where we are sitting here in 2022, post-summer at the movies, and the pandemic obviously threw the entire industry into upheaval. A lot of uh, business models were accelerated. I know you have a lot of uh, very interesting opinions on that. Yeah. And it certainly changed the business to have, I remember back March 20, 2020, theaters essentially shut down other than drive-ins. And here we are now, two and a half or so years later, with a very different business, very robust business, but definitely has seen a lot of change. So I wanted to talk to you about the opportunities as you see them that are out there right now for movie theaters. And, you know, it's easy after a summer where we had hit after hit after hit to look at the bright side, but I want to look at some of the challenges and opportunities that you feel are facing movie theaters today. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So. You know, some of the main opportunities are, are, that we've seen, I think, in this uh, post-pandemic world is that new content providers are starting to come through. And we're being less reliant on studio content and getting opportunities to play concerts and TED Talks and, you know, educational series and religious series and all these different things where we can fill our auditoriums during the week that we haven't really been able to. Mm -hmm. You know, with that also technology is spurred. So we've seen companies like Meta Media come out of the woodwork and offer, you know, uh, streaming ability in our theaters for live streams without a satellite and without that kind of content. And then you have companies like MoviePass that are, that are coming back and they're gonna be new and improved and there's gonna be like new ways of buying a movie ticket that have never existed before. So this, these are all opportunities that I think kind of came through through the pandemic, you know, because of what we went through. Do you think that's a good that's a good thing? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, we, we're seeing less content from the studios and so we got to look elsewhere to, to fill our seats, you know, and, you know, I think that's a real opportunity. And it's a seven day a week business, Seven day a week right? business, yes. But not every day, day is the same, right? No, not every day is the same. So how, what do you some of the, I'd say some ahead. of the challenges that we've had, you know, like, yeah. like for example, we're seeing 33.7% less film titles this year than we did in 2019. Right. And we got to get back up to 120 plus to survive. Like that's, that's what all the economics work to get us to the numbers we need. Is that the need. biggest issue? Your, I'd, I'd say eyes. yes, that, that really is the biggest issue. And, and right now, 2023, with only 84 titles, 
you know. Now you're talking about wide release, wide release major titles. Yeah. content. Yeah. yeah. I mean, as we went in, you know, we go in from October looking at the future. You put a budget together, and yeah. you know, we have we have admin budgets that we have to hit. And when a studio moves a title, you know, it, it's it's okay that it moves to the following year, but we have to replace those admins somewhere, and that's really the hardest part of of today's economics. So that's where you you think maybe filling that in yep. with uh, event cinema or uh, TED Talks, all the things you mentioned, are a good way to bolster attendance. Let's say midweek when you don't have the movies there, and you know you mentioned thirty three point seven percent fewer titles. That translates to a lot of movies. Yeah. Forgetting the percentage, that's a lot of film, and every film could represent. 10 million, 100 million, we don't know. It depends on the movie. Absolutely. But so each movie represents a ton of revenue. Also, people being interested in going to the movie theater. And how do you, and, and also, isn't it, uh, I've always kind of preached this, but, but that this is a momentum business, right? Yep. So if people are coming through the door, they're seeing in theater marketing out here in, in, in your lobby and in the hallways, they're watching trailers. That's really important for your business to keep that momentum going, I imagine. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. There's times where, where I can remember where people would come in and watch the trailer. You know, the excitement of the trailer release. Right. You know, remember when I think Star Wars, Phantom Menace hit. It was like, <laughs> oh, my God, we got to go see it in yeah. the theater. It has to be done. You know. And well, there's something about seeing a trailer in here, yeah, right, well, uh, on that big screen. And, and real quick, and I'm getting a little off topic just for a second. Let's not forget about the sound, right? We always talk about that big screen. Oh, yeah. But what about the sound quality in here? I mean, I've come to this theater all the time. It's my local theater, Sinopolis Westlake. And the sound is to me, and I'm a music guy and a sound guy. So it's very important. How does that figure into the equation for you and your team? Is that something you, you push out there? Or is it just automatically there and people just get it? No, I, I mean, there's a lot of a lot of protocols and, and technology that goes into place. And, you know, our experts are are some of the best in the industry. I mean, our, our sight lines, if you really get into it, you mm -hmm. know, when you're sitting in a chair and you're looking at the screen, yeah. we do it just perfectly so you are in the most comfortable position watching a movie. You go to a, any, any cinema and you'll, you'll see a different sight line wherever you go. And it's and something I, that the audience doesn't really know, but they feel it, right? Oh if yeah, it's a good and, then, and then you have the sound that just, I mean, it makes your heart beat. It makes your, your stomach rumble. It, it, it does all these wonderful things to, that you will never be able to replicate at home. I don't care really how can't. big your system is. You're it's right. It's never the same. Well, like Top Gun, the opening scene. Oh my scene. God, I mean, yeah. Come on. That's like The Goosebumps. bell charming. Yeah. Bong. Bong. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Boom. They use that a lot yeah. in the marketing, but in the theater, that sound is like iconic, Absolutely. kind of baked into the DNA of all of the, we are, the film fan that are that is out there. Now, I want to talk, you about, talk to you about the proliferation of streaming. And do you see... Apple Plus, Hulu, Amazon Prime, HBO Max, Apple Plus. I mean, you can name off all these various streaming services. Are they additive and complementary to your big screen business? Or is this adversarial? Or does it matter? Does each business operate on its own and rises and falls on its own merits? It's a great question. I, I think that the answer is, is you could answer it any way to make it work, right? Yeah. So I think the real look is, is you got to look at your customers. So Sinopolis, you know, we're a, we're a luxury dine-in concept. You yeah. know, most of our customers have really great systems at home where mm -hmm. they can sit and watch a movie and all this great content that's being provided by TV right now. I mean, you know, it's it's probably some of the best original content we've seen on TV in years. You yeah. know, I think, and, and it's amazing. But what I'd say is, let's look at like the data, right? Like that's that's what I would look at. And you have a perfect example with Halloween. Right. So yeah. so we go to 2018. The original Halloween comes out. It's, you know, tracking through the roof and it opens to, you know, 70 plus million dollars. Yeah. That's great. Then we've got a pandemic and it just shuts the industry down. Yeah. And we go to, you know, 2021 and we have the next Halloween again, tracking through the roof. But this time they're like, we got to kind of be safe and go day and date with right. with the peacock. Right. Yeah. So. What happens is we, we cut the gross in half and it opens to like, you know, $49 million. So how much of that was pandemic? How much of that was streaming? How much of that was piracy? Which doesn't really get talked about a lot. Right. But once you put one of these films onto a streamer, 
there is a perfect pristine copy available for pirates and it goes wild it's like it's like catching wildfire you know most people don't think about that it is a perfect pristine, it is it's as it's good as you possibly copy, can get right? and the second it hits it's available within minutes so that's a big issue too obviously. absolutely and, and i would I would love to see see the statistics of actual how much piracy happens on a film, and I know they do. It's out there, but you know we don't really talk about that. Well, you know, it's interesting you mentioned Halloween because the the horror movie has been a mainstay of the box office forever, yep. but particularly so when the pandemic hit, that became the go-to genre. In fact, in our ComScore data, yep. about a billion dollars in box office since since March 20 of 2020, and most lately, Smile. Opened well and is well, a, that, you know, a what a success story that was. You yeah, know? I mean it, it overperformed, did twenty two million dollars at the box office this weekend. That was a essentially it was a streaming title, and now it's it's going theatrical. I mean, can you imagine had had Fox slash Disney done that with uh, uh, the Predator movie? Oh my God, right. that could have been eighty million dollars at the box. Well, and no, and let's really yeah. get into it. This new. Uh, uh, the Beth Midler witch movie. The yeah, Hocus Pocus, Hocus Pocus 2. Hocus <laughs> that just came out. You know, I, I think that, who knows? That could have been a $150, $200 million film right there theatrically. Well, maybe the this sort of uh, test kitchen, if you will, yeah. of the pandemic with as, re, as related to the box office is giving us a lot of lessons in real time. By us, I mean the industry writ large. That, Absolutely. That we now are seeing. It's not just us saying theatrical is best. You're biggest bang for the buck is go theatrical first. It's being proven in the numbers. And that's not to say that streaming isn't great, people don't love it and all that, but these are two business models that are very different. Yeah, but but we, what we are seeing is, is companies like Warner Brothers pulling back. And that's mm -hmm. that's where it's, okay, so let's, let's, let's focus on this. Yeah. You know, what, what they're doing is they're saying, okay, there is longevity and a life for a film once it goes in a theatrical component and people have a shared experience watching this movie. Like, you can you can probably think of the first movie you kissed your first girlfriend in, you know? <laughs> and that movie will resonate with you for the rest of your life. That's true. But That's can true. you remember the $150 million film that Netflix put out at Christmas time two years ago? No, it doesn't really work that way. Yeah, it's six underground. <laughs> Gone, but let's say we let's say we take the, the the Netflix films and these these great films that are being produced, yeah. and we put a marketing budget behind it, and it grosses let's say a hundred million dollars at the box office, just like uh, Knives Out did, right? Yeah. For Lionsgate, let's yeah. let's put this into today's perspective. We get the new Knives Out two coming out, and we gross a hundred million dollars that Netflix gets to keep and put back into that 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 amount of money that they spent for it, but then they can take the film and go exclusive on Netflix and nobody else. Right. That's, that's what I'm talking about. There is, there is life in these films that is being completely missed out because of the shared experience. Well, don't you think too, it's because a movie theater and a movie, to me, is more of a bespoke experience. In other words, the ecosystem of streaming is so huge that each movie is like a drop in this giant ocean of content, whereas in a movie theater, even though there are many films released every year, pre-pandemic 11 billion a year in domestic box, uh, 40 billion plus globally, but still it's a, and I don't mean a small business, I mean it's a, again, bespoke, curated, uh, culturally relevant and resonant experience that you share. And you're right, people remember the first movie they went to that had an impression on them or on their first date. There's just something about the movie theater that imparts that. I think part of it too is you're sitting within these f these four walls of the movie theater and architecture has an impact on your psyche. Yep. Getting out of the house, the eventization, if that's a word, Absolutely. of going out. So I think that that's really cool. But, but I get what you're saying. It's definitely different to release a film day and date than it is to go theatrical first, even with the window. Now, let's talk about windows real quick. Sure. You know, there was this, uh, it was a bridge too far for many years to go shorter than 90 days on the theatrical window. I think one thing the pandemic did is accelerate that and, and allowed people to accept, studio by people, I mean studios generally, to accept a shorter window, a dynamic window. Yes. How important is that to the industry to have those dynamic windows? Well, I, I mean, clearly it's it's important. I mean, I think the bigger the window, the, the stronger the ability for the film to gross theatrically. Right. And we saw that with Top Gun. I mean, Top Gun played for, it still is. I mean, I'm, still I'm, I'm still holding it in my complexes <laughs> today. And, and I'm not kidding, I've seen it three times theatrically and every time was great. Uh, so I, I absolutely. couldn't have a better movie doing that. But 
you know, the, the, the dynamic window isn't for, I mean, the, the, or the, the, the long window isn't for every title. And then that, is, that has been proven. And this is great. So we can, you know, come off a title after 17 days if we have to, yeah. you know, uh, or, or 21 days or 35 days or 45 days, you know. It's, it's, it's not good to leave a movie in a theater if no one's going in there to no see it. If no one's showing up, why are we putting it in, exactly. you know? What, 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 what's kind of given us the ability here is, is this, you know, uh, let's look at it a little differently than than two weeks clean kind of model this this uh you know five shows a day uh scenario that we did you know pre-pandemic now we're looking at how do we how do we program our screens dynamically so that we can maximize the occupancy on every hour so it's not set it and forget it anymore no no it's every every was minute it ever? every well for me <laughs> since i've started every minute i'm looking at the okay what can i do how can i figure out how do we maximize the occupancy on the two o'clock hour and the four o'clock hour and does the that come from your hour? old school because we talked about this uh, before we started filming that there are old school ways of doing business that are either outmoded now or still there. What are those old time? Well, the, yeah, the old time is is the, the five shows a day for a two weeks guaranteed, no matter what. If you want to play our film, you got to do it this way. Well, right. guys, like like kids films don't sell at all during the 10 o'clock <laughs> hour or, or the nine o'clock hour, you know, yeah. like. What if we what if we do things differently and and you know maximize the 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 daytime hours with the, the family fair and the and the adult content goes after the evening and we give them the best show times for the best films and and everybody wins. Do you think though that the because of the pandemic now it does open it up more to having everyone open to change like in other words not think, stuck in the old the, modes I, I of think doing business? The doors are opening for that. The reason is I mean you know the the studio shortened the windows what did we do yeah we didn't do anything as far as exhibition goes it's not like we well we're gonna you know do this like we're just okay yeah. <laughs> you shorten the windows now we're gonna we got to figure it out so let's let's try to make this as lucrative as possible for both parties and let's let's figure out this partnership and let's make it better for everybody because right now is the biggest opportunity probably in the history of our business for change right and, and this is it let's do it well isn't disruption often just that yeah. a disruption like the pandemic oh, kind of forced everyone to accelerate their thinking or the change the business model and that kind of thing yeah absolutely i mean like like for example Sinopolis, we're offering a brand new menu this week and and we've got you know a, a hummus and avocado toast and we've got you know, uh, uh, a new macaroni and cheese that they've You're created. Getting hungry right I now. know, right? And, 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 and even fried pickles, you know? Like, yeah. I mean, this- Does that make it super, I see you get very excited when you're talking about the menu. Well, I get excited about- Because that's about dynamic it. like Windows, right? Absolutely. <laughs> so, so what we're doing is we're upping the element to come to the movies. Like, like, yeah, we could just be selling popcorn and hot dogs and nachos and that's it and candy or we can we can offer other things and really cool you know recliner seats and you know and such and, as these yeah and make you feel like you're getting your money's worth when you go out well it really is an event to come here absolutely I really feel like sinopolis that's why we always come here is because it is an event i'm not just saying that it really is it's a different type of experience to be in this theater but the food and the drink and all that is really important obviously oh, God. yes and that was one of the things though during the pandemic it also affected that uh, of course you you know better than anyone you couldn't really serve you had to wear a mask the whole time you couldn't really serve food yep. i mean what an impact on an industry that came back like it wasn't just about fewer movies at the end and, and there's still fewer movies. Yeah. I don't know about many fewer movies when the box office oh, yeah. was cut in half and all that. But not only that, but concessions and, and all of that really that puts a takes a huge toll. Well, you know, it, it, as we're coming back, people are spending. They they want to go and have a good yeah. night out. Yeah. And that's that's been kind of the same. And they want a premium experience. They does. absolutely do. I mean, you know, and nobody, the, the days of those dirty theaters with the popcorn on the floor and, you know, yeah, you those days are gone. The <laughs> floors you're walking, you know, like I can't imagine that being much of the future for our business. Now yeah. that we've, we've really set the tone and no, you Sinopolis, really Sinopolis really done a great job getting other, other, you know, exhibitors out there to step it up. Well, and, the and competition offer. level has gone through the roof. Yeah. And now that sort of the genie's out of the bottle that everyone's experienced this kind of experience, you can't really get away with not providing that. No. And I would argue it's a bargain. Uh, it, you know, even yes people and complain. No. And so let's, let's Yeah, talk okay, about let's it. talk about, and then I have some else, uh, many other things I wanna talk about. Yeah, let's talk about from your perspective, so what's I, the value proposition? I, look, the, the 
our prices on on everything from goods to film to rent to everything is going up. You know, there's a there's the 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 oh uh, uh, shipping and whatnot. I'm right. On it. Well, but I was talking more about the price. Of I'm, I'm getting there. Oh, okay, okay. So, so, so start over. It's okay. okay. So so we're <laughs> we're seeing we're seeing our prices on everything in our business drastically increase right now. So your costs? Our costs are going, are going up. up. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's every business is going up. The yep. economy is in a weird spot right now, right? Yep. So with that, you have to raise your prices to survive. And that's the scary part because the further you raise your price, the less people are coming to the theater. Yeah. So we had, let's say, you know, six million admits last year. This year we're gonna have 5.8 because we had to increase it by 10% or whatever, you know? Price sensitivity is definitely there. Right, and I think that that's where the real opportunity lies within our business. And what do you think about, and I'm just gonna talk about, it's not in the questions, but you know, National Cinema Day, uh, we found in our data really boosted uh, movie going well, on it, that it, Saturday. You know, it, it, it was reminiscent of a Tuesday bargain matinee day. Yeah. You know, I mean, those were the people that came out. There's their $3 tickets. Let's do it. Let's go yeah. to the movies, you know? And that segues perfectly into my next question, which is talking about the difference between the weekend and midweek. You alluded to this earlier with, I think midweek is a great time to put in alternative content or different types of programming. But there's a fixation, obviously, both from a box office perspective and just everyone fixates on the, on the weekend, yes. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. But what are what are those really cool opportunities midweek, and do you see a lot of movie going then? Do 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 people uh, are are there ways for you to entice more people midweek? Are you doing anything to do that? Absolutely. So so at Sinopolis, we we started offering half off Tuesdays. Mm -hmm. We get you know you get one bargain matinee day, uh, based on the principles of the, uh, you know the studios and the and the contracts that we get. So. Right. You know, everybody's doing that Tuesday or bargain <laughs> met or bargain pricing. What we did was half off, and what we said is, you know, we're offering a much better experience than most of our our competitors are offering. So, yeah. you know, we can't charge five dollars a ticket to come sit in a theater and and, and all the food <laughs> concepts and the yeah. service levels that we provide. But what we saw was a spike in admits that that was very reminiscent of Sunday afternoons and Sunday Sunday days in general right. for Tuesday. And, and with that, it's, it's really spurred on kind of this idea of pricing and how we look at it. Mm -hmm. And I think that dynamic pricing really is going to take effect in the, ne in the next few months, if not year. But yeah. it's going to be something that, that we're going to be able to cater to all socioeconomic you know, levels that, that is from the, the lowest of the level to the highest. And, and yeah, your 7 o'clock is going to be more expensive, th or your 7 p.m. is going to be right. more expensive than your 10 a.m. But, but the ability to have that dynamic pricing is the key. And you go back to one of the old ways is you have a per cap minimum, you know, <laughs> right. that, that, that's on your master license <laughs> agreement. And guys, we got to work around that. Like, yeah. like I know that your content is, 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 is valuable, but if we can bring in 30, 40% more people, that means more money in your pocket. It means that you win altogether right. as a studio. Well, it seems like you're not locked in to, like you well, are open-minded to I doing think that, business in a different yes, way. Yes, there's a real opportunity for partnership right there. Yeah. And that's 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 one of the like big time things that we got to start working working out. Let's, yeah. let's figure out how we can all make more money together, that we can make this whole business work better so that we're all like not struggling, you know? Yeah. And I think some of the things you, you I was going to ask you about the innovations that Sinopolis does, and you talked about a couple of those with the half price Tuesdays and all that kind of stuff. Um, what about handpicked? One of my favorite of your promotions. I have to bring it up where you show older films. I saw Dirty Harry here yeah. on the big screen for the first time. I don't know since the 70s. Uh, the Big Lebowski here, uh, North by Northwest. I mean. Do you choose these? Do you have a team? I want to be on that team. I want to help pick these really for myself. So, uh, so where did this idea, and I know others have done it, but you guys do it really well. Well, Liz, Liz Deutsch and I, you know, we're, we're the team together. And yeah. uh, Liz is fantastic, analytical, and mm -hmm. we do a lot, of, a lot of discussions about how we program film, you know? And, yeah. and when we're doing the hand picks, like we had, we had this idea let's say in January, we knew that, that Amazon was bringing out Lord of the Rings, you know, this oh, series. Oh yeah, yep. So we figured out what day it was, 
and then three weeks prior to that, we started Lord of the Rings 1 on Wednesday, <laughs> and then we did Lord of the Rings 2 and Lord of the Rings 3. Well, we sold out not only one set of Showtime, we sold out two sets of Showtimes in every building across the circuit because we were able to piggyback off of the Amazon marketing and that's what, what caused See, I love this. That's, <laughs> that's, that's outside the box yeah. thinking, right? Well, it's also, you're not just looking at the movie release calendar right. for movie theaters. No, now we're looking, you're at, looking, at, we're looking at the, at the world, world, right? And, and for and the other example I had was, was The Godfather. So yeah. we, we, we looked at uh, uh, Paramount Plus as the offer. I don't know if you've seen that oh, show. Oh, are you kidding? That's amazing. <laughs> That's and, and, my and, show. And so we, we, we knew that, that there was an audience out there watching this, and everybody's talking about it. So with our finger on the pulse, we said, let's play Godfather 1 and 2, and let's see what happens. We sold out every single show. Brilliant. Yeah. And, and so far yeah. to date, we're at like 47,000 admits for, for this year just on our handpicked series alone. Wow. And that, that's cool. I mean, that's that says there's like people want to go see these. Well, that goes back you know? to it's additive and complementary, the Absolutely. big screen and the small screen. But you're actually I like the strategic planning. Yes, that that's key. Uh, knowing just, knowing what's coming, understanding what the world is coming at you and how, you know, somebody's talking about, you know, Goonies or whatever, you know, where where is that happening? And and then, oh, it's it's actually in this DMA. Well, now you're in the DMA and you're like, throw the Goonies in and suddenly it works, you know? And it is some of those older titles. I know that when the pandemic first hit, drive-ins were playing a lot of those uh, oh, studio, yeah. those old archival titles or library titles. Yep. And they were just doing, and I know Goonies was one that was doing great It was doing business. great, yeah. Goonies, Goonies saved a lot of theaters during the, uh, the downtime of the pandemic. Yeah, who knew? Brothers. Who knew Goonies? Warner Brothers and Universal were great, you know, and then Par or Paramount had a great, all three of those guys really just came up and stood up and said, here's some good product for you to play, you know? Yeah. And thank God they were there. And it just shows again the importance of the big screen experience. Because yep. to see a movie that you could have bought 20 years ago and watched at home, to want to go out to a movie theater now and see it on the big screen fully shows the differentiation in the minds of, I don't even want to call them consumers, film fans, movie lovers, that the special place that the movie theater holds for them, the sight and the sound and this, the communal environment is so important. Absolutely. Yeah, it's really yeah. cool. You know, just a quick story, my, my mom and my grandmother in South Dakota, you know, my grandfather's running the, the movie theater there and, yeah. and Hitchcock asks, it for extras for uh, North by Northwest yeah. up at the uh, at yeah. the uh, monument there, and yeah. so they went up and they're they're in the background. Of really? The movie. Yeah. So my uh, my my mom and my grandmother are in North by Northwest. And you're in this video. And I'm so in this video. <laughs> <laughs> so we come full circle. I mean, very Hitchcock. So yeah. Very much so. I love that. I yeah. love that story. That's great. Yeah. So let's. I'm going to wrap up in a few minutes, but I want to ask you about like what are the what are the, I know there's fewer product or fewer movies, studio, major studio product. So Joe, what are the movies that you see coming up in 2022 and then into 2023 that really excite you, either from a box office perspective or just you're excited to see them? Yeah. What, are, what are those movies? For 22, we've got, we've got uh, Black Panther. I mean, we had tickets go on sale today and you know they, we had a thousand tickets sold within the first couple hours and now I can't wait to go back and see what's gonna, yeah. you know, where we're at Probably now, the counter's know? going up. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw that with Star Wars. <laughs> I mean, it was like sold out, sold out, sold out. Right? I was like, yes. So yeah, we're excited about, about Black Panther. You have Avatar, The Way of the Water. Um, yeah. You know, we saw a little bit of footage on it at mm -hmm. uh, the NATO thing and yeah. it looks amazing. I yeah. can't wait. Can't wait to actually see see the whole film, you know? And I think that's what everyone's excited you to know, see. And James Cameron's never under-delivered. He always over-delivers, and I, I think it's gonna be gigantic. There's a lot riding on this, though, because there, yeah. what is there, uh, a third, a fourth, a fifth on the calendar? Yep. Yeah. I mean, those but are. If anybody's going to be able to pull it off, I think James it's James Cameron. Cameron. Absolutely, and then you have Fablemans. And that that uh, was the other one I was going to say. Fablemans looks like like probably best picture of the year. Yeah, Spielberg's love you letter. Know, my my to my, film. my hope and pray is that that. Universal releases the film much faster because I have a feeling this thing's going to sit in our theaters probably through February. Oh, that's a good point. You yeah. know, and there's way more money for them to make if they do it instead of, you know, hold off and go slow. And, you know, I, I know that there was those ways of, of, of distribution planning, but yeah. this film. It's funny I, that you say that because we were talking about earlier about the old timey ways of doing things. Yep. But you're right. Sometimes these movies. Get them out there, like, if they're good full enough, on. Yeah, I mean, look at Top Gun. It, yeah. just, it just hung in there, yeah. you know? 
and still going, like you yep. said. And then uh, last is Babylon. Yeah. I think, oh, yeah, I think Babylon. Babylon for us is going to be a home run. Well, Damien I, Chazelle. Oh, my God. La La Land's one of my favorite still movies. Still Whiplash, yeah. dude. Whiplash, Whiplash is that's, my, that's my movie right there. Yeah. Uh, I think there's so many cool movies. And next year looks Tremendous. Next year's next year's got a, a, a lot of film. What's great about next year's slate is the amount of hundred million dollar films versus this year. Right. So I think we'll see a twenty percent increase in box, and I think that that is going to be essential to us getting back on track to two thousand nineteen. Right. I think ultimately at the end of the year we'll still be down probably twenty five percent from two thousand nineteen. Mm -hmm. But we're getting there, and that means 25 and 26 could actually get us to that level. We just need more product. We need the 120 films a year. That's the main thing, right? Absolutely. But, you know, of the films that I'm waiting, I can't wait to see Dune 2. Dune 1 was probably my favorite film of last year. And was available day and date and still killed it in the theater. It did 100 million. It That's could have done 500 million. Oh, I know. You know? But it, w it was a movie that even though people knew they could watch it at home. Yeah. Well, and also uh, Denny Villeneuve, what a, what a visionary. Yes. And the imagery on screen, every frame is like a work of art. But yeah. it's mainly a work of art I saw on the it, I saw it twice, both yeah. times at the Chinese. Did you know what was going on in that movie? I, I did. No. Oh, my God. I loved every <laughs> second of it. I was, I was such a nerd. But, I don't but read. Dude I watch is, movies. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, let's see. We got Dungeons and Dragons. I yep. think movie's going to deliver. Looks so over the top fun. I can't wait. Yep. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three. I think we're going to cry our eyes out in this movie. Mm -hmm. From the the first footage we saw, it looks yeah. amazing. Yep. Can't wait for Agreed. it. And then uh, I'm a huge Ghostbusters fan, so Ghostbusters sequel. I can't wait. I love the the last one. The Jason oh my god, it was great. One. It was so oh, good. God, man, talk about talk about movie. crying your eyes out with with Ivor Reitman. Oh, oh, I know. Don't spoil it. Wait, everybody's seen it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and then, really and cool. then the last is Star Trek. I'm, I'm a total nerd. I love, I love sci-fi, and I can't wait for Star Trek. Those are that's a great lineup of films. But I, I, I really think it's what I'm getting from you, and we're going to wrap up here in about a minute or so. But what, I, what I'm really getting from you, Joe, is that you just, you love this business. Yes. But you also love serving the audience, or, or your the patrons, or the movie fans that come into your theater. I think you look at it as how would you want to be treated yep. or what would you want to see up on that big screen or what options would you want if you walked into a theater and you're able to actually make that happen along with your team. Yep. And it's pretty incredible. Well, we, we go and watch every movie that's available and we only pick the best movies for this audience to see. And like Woman King that just came out. Yep. Oh, what an amazing film. Yeah. I, I, I loved every second of that film. What an action packed kind of out of left field surprise hit and sure enough it's doing great at the box office and we're, we're very happy with it yeah. you know yeah and it has that gravitas because it yeah started in a theater and it's still in the theater great. it'll wind up on the small screen oh, they'll wind up they on the small do. screen eventually yeah, yeah, yeah. but you know i'm i'm the type of person where if i love a movie in a theater i'll see it as many times as possible because unless it comes back hand-picked that's the last chance I'm going to get to see it the way it was meant to be seen. True. But then I'll go home and buy it and watch it over and over. Very different experience, though, in the movie theater. So I'm really excited uh, about your enthusiasm for the industry, albeit with some caveats and some recommendations and your take on what the business should be doing, how the pandemic affected the business, and how theaters and studios can work together moving forward to make this a better business. I'll give you the last word. Uh, what do you see for the future of both Sinopolis and the movie business and theatrical and the studios in general? I think first and foremost, more product brings more consumers. More movies, people. Yep, we need more movies. That's, <laughs> that's the biggest and foremost thing I need to say. Uh, I think that, that creating dynamic pricing programs is, is the next level. Yep. And how do, we, how do we make movies available for not just you, but everybody in the world? Right. You know, like let's, let's start out at you know, this level and let's get all the way to the top. And I want everybody to go to the movies. I agree. Product, price, and experience. And last, <laughs> you know, I think that, that, that distributors and exhibition are partners in this business. And I respect every distributor out there. You know, we yeah. have tough Mondays and we get through it, but I think that, that there's a real opportunity for all of us to, to communicate better with each other so that we can maximize our partnership and that we can both you know, succeed in this business in such a better way. We're just, you know, we're getting through it, you know? It's, I like it. Yeah. I like it. Joe, Joe Garrell, Vice President of Film for Sinopolis. I really appreciate you being on the very first video edition of the Comscore Many Screens Big Picture Podcast. 
and I'll see you at the movies. Right, Joe? <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Thank you.